Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in Analog Electronics Playlist. In today's tutorial, we'll talk about Miller's Theorem. And towards the end of this tutorial, we'll also talk about the dual of Miller's Theorem. So if this is something that interests you, then please keep watching. Let's look at the statement of Miller's Theorem first. The Miller theorem refers to the process of creating equivalent circuits and it asserts that a floating impedance element supplied by two voltage sources connected in series may be split into grounded elements with corresponding impedances. That's the theoretical definition of Miller's theorem but to understand it properly we need to see its implementational areas. Now please understand Miller's theorem is super important when we talk about feedback amplifiers. Now if you look at a two port network and this two port network has some feedback. It talks about an impedance connected between two voltages. So this feedback is connected from the output to the input. And some part of this impedance uh, in the feedback is associated with the input and some part of this feedback is associated with the output. And what Miller's theorem does is it breaks the feedback element into two parts. And what are those two parts? They are the contributing input element and the contributing output element. If we were to solve this kind of a two port network for example, we had this simple two port network and we had a feedback connected from the output to the input. We know that it becomes very, very difficult to solve this kind of a network because of its uh, complexity in terms of the configuration. So what Miller's theorem does is it it breaks this impedance, which is the impedance in the feedback part into two different impedances. One impedance will be associated with the input voltage and the other impedance will be associated with the output voltage and it becomes a lot easier to solve such kind of networks. So that was the introduction to the Miller's theorem. Let's see how does it work. For example, we take up two different voltages, V1 and V2. And of course, these voltages V1 and V2 are measured with respect to a ground here. And a feedback element is connected, a feedback impedance Z is connected from V2 to V1. What Miller's theorem says is it we can represent this circuit using its equivalent circuit. Just look at the first definition. It says that it refers to the process of creating equivalent circuits. So the equivalent circuit will look something like this, where this Z will be decomposed into two parts, Z1 and Z2, where Z1 will be the contributing input element and Z2 will be the contributing output element. And then it becomes a lot easier to solve it. So basically segregating the impedance in the feedback part into two different um, impedances, one for the input and one for the output is the task of Miller's. From figure one, we can see that I1 is the current flowing from node V1. So, from the direction of the current I1, we see that it goes from V1 minus V2 upon Z, high potential to minus lower potential upon impedance Z. And current I2 is flowing from V2, so we'll say that current I2 is expressed as V2 minus V1 upon Z. And from figure 2, again, uh, you can see that I1 is the current flowing from V1 voltage into the ground. So the expression becomes V1 upon Z1, I2 becomes V2 upon Z2. From here, we know that these two circuits are equivalent, so I can 
equate i1 with this i1 and this i2 with this i2 and this is what i'm going to do to find the values of z1 and z2 which are the decomposed impedances so when i equate the first i1 with the second i1 i get v1 minus v2 upon z is equal to v1 upon z1 and cross multiplying i get z1 to be equivalent to z into v1 upon v1 minus v2 z1 becomes z into 1 upon 1 minus v2 upon v1 divided everything by v1 so this becomes 1 this becomes 1 and this becomes v2 by v1 and of course v2 by v1 is the voltage gain considering v2 is the output voltage and v1 is the input voltage the impedance associated with the input z1 will become the in the feedback path multiplied by this vector 1 upon 1 minus av and if we equate i2 with the other i2 in equation previously discussed we get v2 minus v1 upon z is equal to v2 upon z2 and we get z2 to be equivalent to z into 1 upon 1 minus 1 upon av because a v1 upon v2 will be 1 upon av so that becomes pretty simple in terms of derivation now here is the practical implementation of uh, Miller's theorem with respect to feedback amplifiers. Let us say you have a feedback amplifier with an output at V0 and input at V1. So you have this R1. So if we were to decompose this R into its contributing element at the input and contributing element at the output, I can simply put up an R with the input of course connected to the ground and the value becomes r upon 1 minus av and this becomes r upon 1 minus 1 upon av again i like to reiterate the basic definition it asserts that the floating impedance element the floating impedance element was the impedance in the feedback path supplied by two voltage sources so those two voltage sources were output voltage and input voltage connected in series of course split up into two grounded elements with corresponding impedances so that is what we have done that is what we have done here we have split these two grounded elements or grounded impedances now let's talk about the dual of miller's theorem the dual of Miller theorem says that if we have an impedance which is common to the two port network like this where this impedance shares the voltage V1 and V2 this can be also split up into its equivalent circuit like this just as in the Miller's theorem we we express everything in terms of voltages the dual of Miller's theorem will uh, will help us express the impedances in terms of current gains so how do we do that from from this figure we know that applying kvl here we see that v1 minus i1 plus i2 into z is zero and applying kvl here i see that v2 is i1 plus i2 into z so which is not that tough if we were to you know find uh, the voltages and if we know the currents it's not that tough to find the voltages but if this impedance could be decomposed into two impedances and should be placed here that becomes even more easier calculation of v1 becomes very very easy so this becomes v1 is i1 into z1 v2 is i2 into z2 so if we equate these two i1s and i2s of course the current gain is minus i2 upon i1 that's because the direction of current is opposite in the other port 
you'll find that your decomposed z1 comes out to be equivalent to z into 1 minus a1 and z2 comes out to be z into 1 minus 1 upon a i uh, a i being the current gain of the network which is expressed as the output current upon input current so that is how miller's theorem plays a vital role in solving feedback networks thereby decomposing the impedance in the feedback network into two components one for the input and one for the output and that makes the calculation and solving the network a lot easier i hope this tutorial was of help if you liked the content of the video please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel don't forget to press that bell icon for latest updates and I'll see you around in the next video. Take care, have a great day and a good life ahead.